Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today is the second day of uh, SQL. So in the first session, we saw in detail about the concepts, like how the database is being designed, various techniques that is being used. So today we are going into the hands-on part. The various things that we are going to learn today are uh, here. So we are going to see how to create a new database and how it can be dropped and uh, how to use insert statements in order to uh, insert new data and uh, how to do the data selection, how to update the data or how to let like, delete, truncate or uh, drop a particular table. And, uh, and finally, we are going to see about uh, the uh, methods, popular methods for importing the data. Uh, so that is one UI based method, which is quite easy, uh, but it's very time consuming whenever we need to do a bulk insert, whenever the data that needs to be inserted is really huge. So then we need to use something called as a bulk insert. So we are going to see about all these things in detail in today's tutorial. Uh, so state connected and then uh, uh, after uh, going through the tutorial video, try to do all these by yourself uh, on the same uh, default DB that comes up with uh, the uh, uh, MySQL workbench. And uh, come, let's get started with the tutorial and uh, uh, let's learn together. Coming to the tutorial part, we are going to see about the various concepts that we have covered in the introduction. We are going to see how to uh, implement them uh, using MySQL DB. And, uh, uh, the tool that I'm going to use today is MySQL Workbench. Uh, so the commands that we are going to cover today might slightly differ depending upon the database server that you are going to work on. So between databases such as MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, some of the commands might slightly change. Uh, so maybe keep, keep that in your mind. So when, if you are, if in case you are using a different DB, uh, if things are not working out correctly, maybe try to understand that maybe the command is not exactly same. So maybe there is a sm small modification that is required. Uh, having said that, let's get into the details. So the tool that I'm, to, uh, the database that I'm using today is MySQL database. And uh, I, I'm using MySQL Workbench in order to execute all the queries. So as you see on my screen, in order to create uh, the database, the command is create database and name of the database. So this is the command that is used in order to create a database. So I have already executed this. Uh, so here, in order to let it, to briefly explain like how what, what this is, let it, this is the SQL editor window that you see here. So here, uh, this is where we write our queries and uh, in order to execute them, we select that it can be selected and then we can use this particular icon here in order to execute the queries. And on the left, we have a navigator where we have all the schemas like the databases. So we can go through the databases uh, like, uh, so this is the default database. Uh, if I click on the arrow button, it drops down and then it uh, comes up with all the tables. So if there are any stored procedure or views, it will all come, it will all be coming up here. So this is the list of tables that is present in this particular database. And on the bottom is the output window. So here it keeps track of all the queries that we are executing. So the one with the green tick says that uh, the query was executed successfully. And uh, it also tells us the time when the query was executed, like uh, what was the duration that was taken to execute the query and how many rows were affected and so on. Some details about, about the query that we executed. Uh, so that's about the, the key parts. So, so this is this is how like usually that like any SQL editor that you are going to use would, would be roughly similar to what you are seeing here. Uh, so having uh, created the new database, uh, so if in case you want to drop a particular database, the command is very simple. Like uh, the one that you see on my screen, it's drop database and name of the database. Uh, so I'm not going to execute this particular command because like uh, this command will drop from here, but in the back end, what would happen is uh, the folders will not be deleted. So it uh, requires me to go and manually delete all those folders. So I'm not going to execute the delete or the drop database, but uh, if you want to try that, like, you can try it out, like it will drop the database that you have created. Uh, so the one that we have created, like learn SQL, uh, should be coming up here. And I press the refresh button. As you see here, the, the database is coming up now. Uh, so 
in order to use this particular database, what we can do is we can use the command called use and name of the database. So then what happens is this becomes the default database, whatever command that we are executing, uh, henceforth will be done on the particular database that we are using here. So in, in, case, uh, in case you are operating on multiple databases, uh, remember to select the database that you are going to work on or you can use this command to, to mention that uh, whatever commands that you are going to execute, it's on the database that you have uh, selected here. So now the other commands are like uh, we will be going through how to create a particular table, how to insert using the insertion statements and how to make small modifications. So coming to the first one, the creating a table, so this is how the syntax would look like. So it says a create table, name of the table, and within the brackets, we need to come up with a list of attributes as well as the data type. So here we have four attributes and the first one is the name of the attribute, that is the name of the column followed by the data type. So here customer ID is an integer and the other columns are all uh, varchar of different lengths like 100, 100 characters, 255 and 100 so on. So I'm going to select this uh, one in order to create a table called customers and I'm going to click on this particular button uh, uh, that will execute the command. So as you see here at the bottom, like there is a green tick, which means that the table has been successfully created. So now if I press on the refresh button here, and if I click on the drop down near tables, I can see that the tables, the customers table has been created. And by clicking the drop down here, it shows me the various columns that is present in this particular table. So now let's say I want to insert data into this particular table. I can use the insertion statement. So generally, so this is not the uh, the method that is usually followed. So let's say if you want to create some small table like a Twitly uh, based on the CSV data that you have, uh, you can just copy it in this particular format. So it needs to be insert into and then name of the table and then the list of attributes and uh, uh, within values, we can specify all the values. So whenever there is multiple rows that needs to be inserted, so they can be comma separated. So this will be the first row and after a comma separation, and then this will be the second row into the particular table. So what I'm do, going to do is I'm going to use execute this statement in order to insert values to the customer's table. So let me execute this and uh, this has been executed successfully and uh, I'm going to use the select star from table. So this is the command that is used in order to uh, select data from a particular table. So by executing this, uh, we should be able to see the data. Yeah, so this is the window where uh, the output comes up. Um, so for the query that we have executed, so, so far all the queries that we have executed here, it doesn't create any output. So uh, so it inserts the data, but that's that's it later. So now we are selecting from a particular table and then the, uh, the data that we have selected comes up here in this results grid window. Uh, so he, here in this case, the table is quite a small, so we can directly use a select star from customers. Whereas in case this table is going to be really huge, if you are going to directly read it, uh, by default in most of the SQL editor, it will be limiting uh, the results. Like in this case, it will limit the results to 1000 rows, but let's say there is no limit attached to it. So then we need to do something like, uh, we need to add a statement called a limit, let's say two. So by doing this, what would happen is it will ensure that the results are limited to only two rows here. So, so now we can see that the results are limited to only first two rows. Uh, and in some, uh, for example, in SQL Server, this particular command is slightly different. What happens is instead of uh, the limit two here, uh, what would happen is we would say something like this, uh, uh, top two star. So in MySQL, this won't work. Like instead of top two, like we say limit two towards the end. So the syntax might slightly differ. So coming to this uh, second step. So now we know how to create a database, how to create a particular table and how to insert some values into that particular table. And coming to the next step, we are going to see about uh, making modifications to the table. So we can make modifications using the update statement.
the update statement what's like this so we have to give update followed by the name of the table which we are going to uh, make changes to and then second one is the set is the uh, is the value which needs to be uh, which, which column needs to be changed and then the value of the new column and this needs to be done when the following conditions is satisfied so what we are doing is in a in this particular table whenever the customer id is equal to so and so so then the name of the column this particular column needs to be replaced with michael so it will go to this particular record here where the customer id is matching and the name here uh, the text is quite small so i will read out the name here is actually might uh, so when this condition is satisfied what would happen is the name will be replaced with mitel so let me execute this particular command here and then show you like what's happening so when i execute uh, this particular command so and then now uh, this has been successfully executed now i'm going to select data from the same table and uh, you can see the first record here the name has been changed from might to mitel so this is how we make and change to an existing data uh, so what it needs to do is we need to uh, start with update name of the table and uh, we, uh, the, the new value needs to follow the set parameter so after set name of the column and what should be the new value and in the where clause we need to pass the exact filter condition when uh, this change needs to be executed so this is how an update statement would work uh, so similar to update let's say we want to delete a particular record so it, it will be like it will be the command is delete from and name of the table for and then where the condition so whenever this particular condition that i am highlighted here is met uh, so then those records will be deleted from the table customers so when i execute this command here uh, the first record that we have made changes to should have been deleted so let me select this and then show you so as you see here it has only three records now the first record where the customer id is equal to uh, this particular number here has been deleted um, so that's about the deletion so let's say if we want to truncate the table like we don't want to delete the table but truncate every single record that is present in the table so we can use truncate table and name of the table uh, so this will ensure that all the records all the three, remaining three records are also deleted so when i select this statement uh, we can see that there is no record now it's because the truncate statement would delete every single record in a particular table and then finally the drop table so drop table will ensure that the table itself is dropped so when i execute this one i can see that the execution is successful so now when i try to select from that particular table there will be an error so there is an error here because the the table customers is no longer existing it has, it has been dropped off from the database so these are all uh, some simple commands so what we have covered so far is we have covered creating a database and creating a table how to insert data using the insertion statement how to make modifications uh, using update delete and uh, we have also covered a truncate drop table and uh, so and so so next one is coming to the uh, important part like loading data using two different methods so the one that we saw now that like insertion uh, using the insertion statement this is not the optimal method because uh, if let's say we have like thousands and thousands of records that needs to be inserted we can't copy like entire like a script and then we can't generate those insertion statements for each and every record so it needs to be automated so there are two ways to do it like when the table size is not so big like maybe let's say a few thousands or maybe within like within few mb is like 10 mb 20 mb or maybe even up to 50 mb so what we can do is we can use uh, the import option in order to in order to insert the data so what we are going to do is i'm going to use the learn sql db uh, right click on this particular db and uh, uh, I'm going to use the import wizard in order to import data into this particular uh, DB. So, no. so this might take some time. So the data that we are trying to import now has about uh, like a few MBs, like uh, I think maybe 20 or 30 MB. So it takes few seconds. So you can imagine like if uh, we are trying to import a data that is like maybe in GBs. So this method will not be ideal. 
so it will take a lot of time like when the data size is really huge especially if it is going to contain some kind of a special characters and which requires a special treatment and uh, it will take even hours like uh, let's say like uh, if we want to insert like uh, maybe 1 million record like if we use the wizard uh, then it might take maybe up to an hour or two depending upon uh, the capacity of the system that uh, you are working on so whenever there is really huge data that we want to insert then we will be using an bulk insert or bulk load method which so now the table has been created so i'm going to use uh, the database so that uh, it, it is referring to the proper database and then i'm going to use the select command here so now this you can see that data has been imported successfully so this is how the data looks like uh, uh, so we can check the number of records here using count star so which will give us the number of records in this particular table uh, so it says that it's 1227 very similar to what what the wizard was showing us so this is one way of uh, importing uh, the data so now let's go through the second method like in, in, in order to insert using the bulk loading method what needs to happen is we need to first create a table like uh, in line with the data type that is available in the file that we are going to import so what i'm going to do is for time being like i'm going to use the table that we have just created in order to create a new table uh, so this is the length flits underscore titles underscore new is the new table which i have created the format is exactly same to the csv file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to truncate all the records in this particular new table that we have just created uh, so that uh, what's happening is we just have the table created and uh, I'm going to check using the select star query so we can see that the table is created the reason why I'm doing this is in order to do the bulk insert the table should have been created and the, all the data type should actually follow the data type that is present in the csv file or the file that we are trying to load so now i have used a shortcut to create a table so most likely like you can't be using this particular method so you what you need to do is you need to go through the file see the data type and then you need you need to come up with the create statement that we saw initially in order to create a particular table so once the table has been created so then you can see so this uh, this is this is the uh, script that is used to do the bulk insert. So what needs to be done is uh, we are going to we are saying that the data should be inserted. All the data that is present in this particular CSV file needs to be inserted. So now in order to do this bulk insert, it is ideal. So we can we can pass on the complete location of the CSV file. If in case you have any issues. Uh, because sometimes uh, these uh, uh, maybe these particular server might not have read access to the file that uh, to the location of the file that you have specified so it would be ideal if you can store if you can store like this data into the actual sql server uh, uh, sql server so this location that you see here so this is the location of uh, of the uh, of the database so by default so this should be common for you as well like if you have uh, followed the standard installation procedure uh, so if you go into the program data there would be a mysql folder and then if you go into mysql server and within data there, uh, there all the databases that you have should be listed uh, should be listed on it so in this case I, I want to do the bulk insert on the database learn underscore sql so i need to copy this particular file into this database folder and once the file is uh, loaded on that particular location then i can use this statement here so what i'm saying is i'm saying load data in file whatever here uh, data that is present in this file i need to insert into so i'm saying into a table here and uh, so these are all the characters set depending upon like you can follow the same st uh, statement uh, provided the data doesn't include like uh, too many special characters and the fields are terminated by comma and the lines are terminated by new line character here that's specified <coughs> and let's say if uh, some of your columns has uh, comma separated values within a particular cell so then you, you can use this command enclosed by in order to ensure that uh, the commas that is present within a particular cell doesn't uh, make them uh, to be treated as a separate column uh, so this 
is the statement and then the final one ignore line one because like uh, the line one has the header so we don't want to insert the header twice since the table has already been created i'm going to ignore the line number one so let me execute this command here and uh, and if you see now the the total insertion happened in 0.328 seconds so previously when we were using the import wizard it took us about 30 seconds and the bulk uh, bulk loading uh, is like in, within a fraction of second it was able to do it so even uh, like uh, that, that's why that if you have millions of records that needs to be inserted so if you use this particular approach here it will be inserted like within like within a fraction of second or within uh, uh, in, in a short time so that's about the topic uh, that I had for today. Uh, so a quick recap. So we saw how to create a database, how to drop a database, how to create a table, how to use insertion statement to insert new data, how to make modifications using updation, deletion, how to truncate and drop a particular table. We also saw how to import using the import wizard as well as uh, uh, using the bulk import uh, or bulk loading method. And uh, I hope you have learned something new today. And uh, I would suggest that uh, you also install MySQL DB and uh, like MySQL Workbench and try out all these exercises. MySQL DB by default comes up with a default database. So it is very helpful for you to like uh, learn SQL using those default databases. Uh, this is really important because like whatever job application that you are going to apply on uh, so the the requirement is you need to know one programming language like either mostly like about 80 percent of job opening they such they they prefer r or python and along with the programming language almost every job position for data scientist uh, would ask you uh, for sql knowledge so so it is uh, it is better for you to like uh, use this uh, free tool to learn SQL so that it becomes uh, uh, it helps you in uh, uh, in your job search. So that's it for today. So if you have learned something new today, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't so far. If you think this might be helpful for any of your friends, please uh, share it with them as well. That's it for now. I'll see you on the next session. See ya.